Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Third time's the charm on this one. This is going to be my third attempt at this commentary. I haven't seen this match all the way through. 12 o'clock location, we have Zamu starting as the orange Zerg. 6 o'clock location, we have Fisheye starting as the purple Protoss. This is BSL Season 12, Group B. Whoever wins this series of matches is going to go on to face, I believe, Jess in the finals. Whoever loses this match is eliminated. This is on Blindside, which is usually, I, I want to, like, one of these days, one of these games. Next time I have Blindside up, I will do a map reveal and show you guys what's going on on this. But I am not going to show you guys this time because, spoiler, we're going to have a five pool. And I didn't want to miss the five pool timing, and so we can get it on screen for all those other actions. Also, uh... Can't, I'll try to fill in a few other things. I'm a little bit sick today, so hopefully this will turn into an okay commentary, but that's why my voice is this is about as deep as Diggity's voice gets with the illness. We do see a pylon at the natural expansion, which is actually going to make it difficult to fight the five pool because essentially all the tech, the gateway, other things of... And this is a wide expansion as well. I kind of like the decision to go for a pool on this map, considering that it is a two-player map and how wide this is. However, critically, Fisheye is going to scout this right off the bat. So he's going to be able to get this probe scout in and should be able to react fairly rapidly. Now has 150 minerals. The question is, is does he get a second, is how he reacts to this. And this is going to be a full six Zerglings as this probe wanders in. He's going to get full eyes as they're being built. So wanders up, sees the six Zerglings being built, and sees the spawning pool morphing in as well. And right now, moving it probe out. And this is, I'm almost wondering if he was waiting to save for this is a little bit this is unfortunate because he's a little bit later on his gateway as well putting that pylon at his main also getting that forge built i was wondering if he was going to try to sneak i think he was trying to sneak a 12th pool he was hoping for that and unfortunately yeah now running instead into really about as early aggression as you can get out of zerg while still maintaining some semblance of an economy five zerglings making their way down they're going to get inside zamu's base before well maybe as a cannon's warping in they're about halfway across this map now, mid-position, as this forge is just finishing. So at the very least, Fisheye is going to be able to get a cannon in his main. That's going to keep him, that's going to keep him from losing outright. However, he's going to end up losing about just because of positioning. So that's 150 plus 100, 250 minerals right off the bat. Which I think puts both players about dead even, actually, in the overall scope of things. Curious on the math. Overall, a gateway being built alongside. Photon Cannon is going to warp in. Those probes need to do a bit of surrounding. Looks like another probe trying to sneak its way out. This probe uh, might get killed. That probe actually managing to sneak that natural expansion. One Zergling taking a half hit as it's making way back across. But they're going to be able to clear this out. They're not going to be able to get additional damage done. That Overlord needs to be careful. So we'll have eyes. And honestly, the Zergling should have eyes on the rest of this tech, the rest of this tech anyway. But clearing that out, following this up with... A second hatchery, but Zamu's going to have a much lower worker count in the early game compared to a standard Zerg build. And also, this probe's kind of sneaking nearby. I'm wondering what it's going to be up to. Should probably get back to mining minerals because it's kind of an economic race from this stage on. With this map control, what Zamu can do, and it looks like he's opting to do, is he's going to go ahead and save up minerals. Ooh, killing that probe right there. Drone getting a kill. That's got to be a proud moment for a drone. Everything's cleared out at the natural. He has map control. He can't really do additional damage. In Fisheye's main. Fisheye actually opening up kind of like a pseudo two gate to follow this up. Although a bit on delay. And you can see Zamu going to go ahead and plop down a third hatchery. But his overall drone count very low for this stage of the game. And for three hatcheries it's going to be sitting at a 10 count. So this opens up opportunities for Fisheye out of two gateways. To go ahead and apply zealot pressure. Force more zerglings out of his opponent. And keep that economy low. He's already sitting. He's just pumped probes in the interim. And he's already sitting at 20 probes. And actually, he's not that far off going ahead and being able to take his own natural expansion. Things kind of... I don't know, it's kind of a weird shift. Ooh, losing a couple minerals right there as he's transferring the drones into gas. So now it's three hatch play. Third hatchery about halfway up. And I'm almost wondering if Zion was going to try to kind of translate this into a pseudo-973. Although the timing of it's going to be off, and honestly, I think the economy of it is going to be off. It's kind of the more critical thing, because he's going to be sitting at a much lower drone count at his main, comparatively, where he would be otherwise. I think in a traditional 973, it looks like he's got that hydral den being built. He is starting to pump. We are seeing some drones being built rather than additional zerglings, but three zealots already making their way across the field with a fourth zealot lagging behind. And Zamu I like this. Additional pressure from Fisheye to keep 
to keep Zamu's economy low. He knows that his opponent has gone for more of an economic hit early in the game. Looks like Hydra's speed is, in fact, being upgraded. One drone here at the natural expansion. Zamu already has a handful of Zerglings out. Is producing more Zerglings to try to defend this. So he has eyes as it's moving across. As you can see, it looks like Fisheye following this up with an additional forge and grabbing his natural expansion. A lot of Zerglings now flooding out. But keep in mind, these Zerglings, even if these Zealots are lost, this is Zerglings that were produced rather than drones. Fisheye, very nice micro, bringing it back to the Zealot line. However, it looks like Zamu produced the exact amount of Zerglings to deal with this Zealot threat. And as a follow-up, if he is going to follow this up with some sort of Hydralist pressure, that's going to be fewer Zealots that are going to be able to provide some sort of defense at the front. However, keep saying however in this match, 16 workers overall is, again, a little bit later of a time. The Zealot is going to be able to wander up. He's going to go ahead and see that Hydralist den. So knows he's going up against, rather than any sort of layer pressure, should be able to skip Gateway as a result. So this Zealot actually providing a lot of dividends. It looks like not quite able to get a drone kill there. One cannon warping in already, and I expect to see additional from Fisheye, transferring, transferring probably, yeah, a full grouping of probes to go ahead and get that mining for him immediately. Now, three drones at this expansion. It looks like, we'll see how many drones at this expansion. It looks like a seven right there. But I'm wondering, yeah, how many at the main, comparatively, for a pure 973. I think he wanted, like, every... Well, actually, he does. He has one for each patch. So now he's kind of wandering into the stereotypical 973 follow-up. But I feel like the timing of it overall is off, and he's had to produce more Zerglings. And, 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 level 1 weapons upgrading. A couple Zealots making their way across. I think this might be a good interruption. There are 8 Hydralisks being produced. I don't know if 8 Hydralisks is going to be enough to deal with these Zealots that are pouring across the map. Citadel of a Dune warping, and they're not going to be speed upgraded. Whereas I believe the Hydralisks are going to have, at the very least, range. So they might be able to micro out of this situation. Thank you, Parabola Gaming, for the raid, by the way. Very much appreciate it. But this is a lot of Hydralisks dealing with not a lot of Zealots. The first Zealot cleared out fairly easily. One Zealot careening across, and this is just overwhelming Zerg forces. Thing is, is despite everything else, Fisheye getting good eyes on that third base, seeing absolutely everything. Loses that Zealot, disrupts a little bit of mining here at the third, but he knows he needs to plop down additional cannons just to stay alive. So that is going to be five cannons at the natural expansion. Forge is whirling. It's about halfway across. We do see that he is, in fact, skipping a Stargate. Probably going to pop... Well, we'll see what Fisheye does to follow this up. He does have another gateway warping in. So should have plenty of forces to deal with this, and the cannons are going to be able to repel these Hydralisks that are moving forward. I'm a little bit... <coughs> excuse me. Concerned with Zamu's position here overall, because he's still not... This is the thing I've seen with a lot of the 973 push, is when the initial attack kind of fails... Also, he's not going to end up losing a gateway on the front... Trying to think about it, it's like losing that forge earlier almost feels like it was it counted towards the grand total. Um, but the Hydralisk is now going to sit range with the Zelts just having to watch. Weapons 1 probably going to have to be cancelled here. I'm actually a little bit shocked that Zamu rebuilt the forge at the front as part of this wall rather than just allowing the the cannons and the pylon to kind of do its thing. Let's see if he, it looks like he does in fact cancel Weapons 1. So going to get a little bit of salvage from that. He has plopped down 4, it looks like he's getting 5 gateways. So going to follow this up with a very strong ground army. It is going to have Zealot leg speed momentarily. And here's the thing for Zamo. This is, again, what I was talking about with, I don't know, I feel like the follow-up with 973 is, is when that initial Hydralisk attack and surround oftentimes fails. I feel like Zerg sometimes don't have, they don't have the, the what's the word? It's kind of a tight presence to, to turn around and, and engage it properly with all of the units that come flooding out from Protoss and being able to get your economy up and running and being able to secure additional map control or get... There's just a lot of things Zerg has to do. You get drones, have enough army to deal with it. We do have a nice city here at the natural expansion, but this third base is wide open for results to just pour into it. They are not going to have level 1 weapons. You can see they already tore... I wasn't even able to get down to the mini-map before they tore through a lot of the Hydrosks there on the front. I don't even see them taking... It didn't look like... Yeah, they didn't even take any base damage. Lurker Aspect is being upgraded... But it is a ways off, and this is a lot of Zealots pouring on top of... We'll see if it's enough Hydralisks to fight this off. These Hydralisks need to be careful. With those speed-upgraded Zealots, they are kind of pinned in a corner. They're moving away. They're trying to draw some of those Zealots off. Not quite able to do so. Sutton Colony coming in, but far too late. Drones fleeing this natural expansion. One Zealot wandering in. There is two. There are two Sutton Colonies to at least defend that natural expansion. But the Sunken Colony's already down. This looks like it's going to be enough Zelts to, first of all, deal with the Hydralisks that are currently on the ground. But maybe even take out a Hatchery or two. 
We'll see. One zealot trying to engage. It looks like several zealots being peeled off. Three being left to work on the hatcheries. And you can see these hydralisks just trying to do the kind of these hit and run tactics. But it's only, it looks like, five hydralisks right there. Lurker aspect just finally finishing for Zamu. But is going to be a ways off even having a lurker on the ground. Let alone having the economy uh, to supply lurkers. And more zealots are continuing to spread across this map. So plenty of zealots. And plus just this narrow engagement point. The zealots can just wander up, do some damage, force the hydralisks back, peel back, and just... Pummel this hatchery. It looks like they're just going to group attack this hatchery. Now peeling off. A couple zealots being left to go ahead and finish that one of those hatcheries off. Finally, more hydalists are on the field to deal with the zealot attack. But hatchery already down. That second hatchery at risk. Is Zamo going to be in time? And still not even bothering to micro these hydalists back and forth at this stage. Still two zealots working on three hydalists. Additional hydalists have been produced. But these three zealots might just be able to power this down. More zerglings being produced to try to defend this second hatchery. And it looks like that hatchery left with just 168 health. An additional gateway being plopped down. We have Psy Storm being upgraded. Level 1 weapons will be there momentarily. Lair is up. Lurkers are potentially on the way. So it is possible that Zamu might be able to follow this up with a Lurker Contain. He's invested a lot in ground units. Another hatchery being rebuilt. This third base is still not mining. So essentially this has been two base Protoss versus two base Zerg, which gives advantage to Protoss. Forge at the natural expansion and the robotics facility right there. Not Keep in mind, not a lot of Dragoons currently on the field. Some Dark Templar being produced, however. And Zealot sneaking all the way around. And Blindside is right, catching that other hatchery. And they're going to be able to treat huge wins for Fisheye. Looks like he's got a couple Zergling forces. They're trying to deny a third. But honestly, as long as this isn't mining, Fisheye is happy to sit at two bases and continue to tech up. I believe Overlord Speed, so Ventral Sax actually uh, looks like it's being upgraded currently. Overlord Speed has already been upgraded. The Zealot's taking a little bit of damage as they're making way across. So I'm not sure how effective these High Templar, or sorry, Dark Templar are going to be, but I take it back. Immediately morphing into a Dark Archon. Interesting. I like that play. Especially going a little bit more Zealot heavy in the follow-up. However, we're going to need an upgrade to, and I assume what we're going to see out of that is, uh, I'm blanking on the name of it. <laughs> St basically, stasis for Zerg. Zealots wandering in, getting a great surround on these units across that 3 o'clock base. The drone's finally getting back there to do some mining, but just as they're doing that, Zealots flooding in. Level 1 weapons is there, so these are very deadly. And working to take down that hatchery before it spawns once again, and it looks like they might get it before Zamu is able to mount a defense. He's all of these units streaming right back across. Another hatchery down. That's three hatcheries that have been taken out at this base. The drones once again flooding out, and again, Fisheye just denying, denying, denying. However, that Ventral Sax upgrade oh, uh, looks like two groupings of Lurkers going to be able to drop in the main. There is a cannon there to provide detection, but not a lot of Dragoons or anything else to mount this defense. It looks like a nice reaction on Fisheye, able to get the probes out of there. That cannon is not long for life. I believe there should be an observer somewhere along here. Sees the Dark Archon. Not sure how much of a tech surprise that is. The Observer wandering in, but this is going to be Dragoons kind of in a difficult position. One Dragoon getting taken out. The second Dragoon having trouble re-engaging. So a little bit of an economic win right there. Good Psy Storm, unfortunately, catching one of his own Dragoons in the midst of that Psy Storm. That's not how you want to expend that Psy Storm. Range just finishing. And Fisheye, so tit for tat both directions. However, Zamu finally able to re-establish, and he is denying Fisheye additional bases. Fisheye opening up his front. He's got a sizable army. And if you look at the supply counts, Fisheye might be in a position to turn around and take this army. Looking for a good Psy Storm here. This, oh, but instead a High Templar getting taken out. A second Psy Storm, a second High Templar getting taken out just as it Psy Storms and basically it's nothing. They're a good follow-up Psy Storm, but that's two High Templar, a lot of gas costs. Nice pick off for Zamu. However, Zamu, you can just see his economy being obliterated through many portions of this map. It's kept his army count very, very low for this stage of the engagement. 50, 50 supply and dropping versus the 129 supply from Fisheye. And that's going to be GG from Zamu. He just does not have enough to pull back the storm. And we'll move on to game two of this Illusions match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. An exciting one. Really back and forth. Non-stop action. Thanks for listening.